Welcome to EcoSummit TV. This is Jan. And this is Jan. Jan blochwitz Nimot. He's actually the chief scientist of Novalet. So what is your um, um, educational background and uh, when did you join the company? And what is your key role on, on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Actually, I'm a physicist by training and I did my PhD uh, on organic LEDs using doped charge carrier transport layers. That's the unique technology uh, that Novalet brings to the organic LED field. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, let's say, studying and did my diploma in Dresden. Then I was going to industry and coming back, I was looking for exciting new topic, which I could, could further investigate. And mm -hmm. uh, the doping technology had such an appeal to me that I thought, yeah, that's maybe a good idea to apply this to OLED. So I did my start my PhD in 1996. Then we made good progress in, in Dresden at the university and mm. we f uh, at the end I was finishing my PhD and we thought, yeah, what do we do next? We have to find a company, we have to found a company to, to make something out of this and to bring it f uh, forward, the topic. So we looked for money and uh, we, get, we get financing. And I became the first technical director and then later on the CTO of Novalet and now I'm the chief scientific officer going one step further and thinking about even new topics uh, which might be of interest for us. So you are actually a co-founder of Novalet? Yes, I'm one of the, I'm the only founder actually which entered the company and, and, and became a management member of the company. Okay, and, and Martin Pfeiffer, who is now with uh, Heliatech, he is one of the other co-founders of Novalet? Exactly, Martin is uh, the second co-founder, Professor Carl Leo is the third co-founder and Jörg Amelung is the fourth co-founder. Ah, okay, and who is still at the company of the four? Uh, just me. Ah, you are the. Uh, I'm the. Yeah, exactly. The last Mohican, <laughs> no, the last the, Indian. <laughs> yeah, I mean the other company. The other founders have been uh, also very important in the in the, in the development for the development of Novalet. Mm. And uh, mm. Martin had the first uh, investigations on the doping approach, mm. which we now use for for OLED, but also for photovoltaics. Yeah, we mm. develop materials for OLED, and we develop similar materials for photovoltaics. Mm. And Martin's new company is is targeting production mm. of this. Or, uh, photovoltaic devices, you, and they need materials, so we provide these materials, that's good. The organic stands for using organic materials to make light emitting lights. Uh, mm -hmm. People know LEDs, uh, these are based on inorganic uh, semiconductor materials like gallium arsenide or mm -hmm. variants of this. Mm -hmm. And these uh, semiconductors, these inorganic semiconductors has to be grown in a very perfect uh, way in, in a crystal form. Mm -hmm. For the organic, which is, uh, if you remember your chemistry uh, uh, school time, there is a difference between inorganic and organic materials. Organic materials are carbon hydrogen uh, compounds, mm -hmm. which uh, we are made of basically, and mm -hmm. uh, you can use these organic materials in a, in a, let's say, on large areas with a less difficult uh, growing process as inorganic materials. So that mm -hmm. makes the difference between the organic LED and the inorganic LED. Mm. To make an organic LED good, you can go to large areas, you can coat square meters of glass or plastic films in the future. Mm -hmm. To make a very good inorganic LED, you have, to make, you have to be in the chip business in a way. You have to make it very small area and you make a point source of light. Mm -hmm. So therefore the organic LED is the best area source of light and the inorganic LED is the best point source of light. What are the new areas as a chief scientist um, that you are looking at at the moment? So um, you have brought this company, I think, in nine, nine or even ten years from 2001 to 2011 to this stage. You have 100 people now, 11 million in revenues and uh, free funding rounds, and now you look into the future. And we have heard before from your CFO that the display market and the luminaire market where you are going to sell your technology into is um, still emerging, and you now already look to the next generation. So can you give us an idea what it is? Yeah, I mean, from a, from a principal point of view, what we are looking in is to use our technical USP, which is the doping technology, in, mm -hmm. in, in as much fields as we can do. And you see mm -hmm. that in OLED lighting and, and in OLED display, mm -hmm. that's where we are, which is set and where we are in. Mm -hmm. um, the next uh, step was OPV, so organic photovoltaic, which which I, I dealt with, and we brought to uh, let's say to a bigger project in, in Novalet, mm. and uh, then other applications which we have in mind is organic electronic in the electronic sense, so mm -hmm. using organic material to make electronic devices, mm. and uh, other applications like batteries also where our materials could play a role are also in under investigations, and a few uh, other one which I don't want to speak about now. I have a little difficulty understanding this um, um, 
definition of and, and, and the process of doping technology. Can you explain in simple words what doping actually is? Because it sounds like this is a, a core technology and it's not easy to, to, uh, to control. <laughs> yeah. Let's say uh, doping is known also from the inorganic semiconductor physics. Mm -hmm. The issue with semiconductors is they are not conductors, therefore they are called semiconductors, they're mm -hmm. not isolators, but they need charge carriers to be fairly conductive. Mm -hmm. If you just have a pure organic semiconductor, there are no charge carriers inside, they are just purely conduct conductive. Mm -hmm. But if you add certain dopants or additive, uh, additive which, yeah. which mm -hmm. could deliver such charge carriers, mm -hmm. then the organic semiconductor layer gets more conductive or the semiconductor layer in, 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 in global gets more conductive. Mm -hmm. That's what is called doping. So you add a certain ty small amount of, yeah, some even call it impurities or, or additives mm -hmm. to the main com component mm -hmm. and that increases the, increases the conductivity of the main component. That's mm -hmm. what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And these kind of dopant material, it's, it's difficult to make because um, if you would add the standard dopants, people knew from, uh, from the inorganic semiconductor, which is phosphor or some, some atoms and ions, mm -hmm. that would not work in the organic field because the organic material is more fluffy, so to say. Mm -hmm. So the, these materials would diffuse and would destroy the doping effect. Yeah, they should be stable in the, in the layer. So what we did, we, the, we, 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 we saw that issue and we developed the right material which are compatible with production processes deliver the wanted effects and are stable in the device over over years and also at elevated temperature. That's that's an issue. That's not easy. So our chemists struggle quite a bit. So it took many years done. to find the best mixes of the materials um, that can be added um, to the um, underlying conductors. But now this um, secret mix, the secret formula is already um, perfect. On are you still um, going to the lab every day and trying to find even better mixes of materials? Now the main is not even the mixing, it's the, the, the material, the organic material is, a, is a, there are millions if not billions of mm -hmm. pot potential organic materials that you can make and you have to find the right one. Mm -hmm. And these materials we are currently selling exactly, but we naturally also uh, try to further develop them, give them better functionality or more functionality and uh, work on other areas in the OLED and provide mm -hmm. the best materials and the best technology uh, that with these materials to our customers. So one more question I want to ask you about uh, Dresden and the University of Dresden, because we actually believe Dresden is uh, the secret German capital of green photonics. And now, of course, we are here to, um, to lift the secret and to tell the world that this is really the place to be. But um, please um, tell us, is it easy or difficult for you to find good, smart people to join your company? And what role um, played the University of Dresden? Of course, you all met there, the co-founders met there, but I mean, the university is still there and you probably have a close relationship. How important is it to be next to the University of Dresden? Uh, from several aspects, it's still important. Yeah, we do uh, uh, cooperate with university in, in, in projects now, so we, we finance uh, longer term research projects. Mm -hmm. We also still look into a pool of, of scientists and there when we, when we have a new position to, to be filled, mm -hmm. candidates are usually also coming from Dresden. Mm -hmm. But we need more and we cannot rely on just one university, so we have hired much more people from basically all Germany and even outside mm -hmm. Germany and Europe to be successful because we need a multitude of skills and, mm -hmm. and, and which are not just from one place. Mm -hmm. Dresden is, is quite attractive as a, as a city, it's a very nice city to live in and uh, has a very good, uh, let's say, work-culture balance, mm -hmm. so, uh, therefore it's not that easy to convince people of, of Dresden, uh, not that difficult to convince people to of come Dresden, to Dresden, yeah. to come to Dresden, exactly. Um, yeah, still we have to we do some work in, in lobbying towards uh, acquiring human resource. And I have learned uh, during the last year that creating a clean tech company takes a lot of time. You have to be really, really patient in order to take the technology from the university lab and commercialize it, bring it into a condition and a, a quality where you can really sell it. Tell us a little bit about um, um, the difficulty the difficulties that you met in the past and how you look back at this 10-year uh, process of, of bringing uh, doping technology from the lab to the mass market. 
Yeah, I mean, keep working. That's that's the learning which I which I have from this mm -hmm. uh, of of this possible uh, time. Uh, if it was long or short, I it it felt short at the end. It was longer definitely than planned, at least and hoped for by our financial investors. Yeah, that's for sure. But on the other hand, side we made constant progress. We could see that we that we gain, uh, let's say, uh, technology maturity, quality, uh, co customer contacts, mm. which leads us into uh, in, into really business and in being really in mass production mm. with our materials that we developed in Novolet based on, a, on an idea. Mm. But it takes some time and it takes money, mm. um, it takes resources, and but on the other side, it's a lot of fun as well. So it's, it, you see a technology uh, from, from an idea status towards a, a product status, and used in products, and that's a, that's a great experience. Mm. Do you remember the moment at the university when you thought about let's create the company? Do you remember who had the idea first to create a company and to try to, um, yeah, and to create really a new market? Not only a new company, but a new market. I mean, it's it's even more than mm. just one company. What you are doing, right? <laughs> but it goes to down towards the motivation why we made this company, which mm. was basically thinking, okay, we have certain uh, reached certain technology status now at the university. It sounds interesting. We are all convinced that we. We believed in the story of doping, mm -hmm. despite many others not believing in that, mm -hmm. because we, let's say we saw the beauty of the approach in a way, mm -hmm. and we thought, okay, if we don't continue, let's say continuation just at the university would be as for a certain time still an exciting research topic, but then mm -hmm. it will, the, uh, you have to go to new research topics in mm -hmm. a way that would uh, sleep in. But uh, we said, okay, then we have to do something else in order to bring it really to market, and we mm -hmm. don't want it to see that somebody else is bringing it to market. So we said, okay, let's try. I think it was Kaliusi the idea first to to say uh, let's try to found a company and mm. uh, and so we we did and uh, actually it was quite brave because we also almost have no proof of our technology in our hands but we still find people believing in in the story and invested in the first round five million uh, euro which is how long did it take you to find the first five million from the first contact of the investor to the closing of the deal around a year one year in two thousand two two thousand three yeah. Mm. Luckily enough, we found uh, with Technostart and, and a German-based venture capital fund that is very eager on new technology and, and they like to work with new technologies. So mm. that's that's great. You have to have this. Jan, thank you very much. It was a big pleasure meeting you here in Dresden in front of your clean room. I think we are standing in front of the clean room. And I'm very proud and, and happy that you founded this magnificent company. 10 years ago out of the University of Dresden. And we will track your company in the future and we will think about ways how we can even do business together. And your CFO is coming to our Eco Summit in three weeks time and giving a great presentation. And we hope that we get some funky green OLED lamps on our stage. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Thank all you. the best. <laughs>